gonna show you guys the technique that I use to make homemade labels and exactly how you can make sure they're waterproof, oil-proof, smear-proof. You can let this sit in water for like days and it'll be fine. So let's get into it. PicMonkey is where I create all of my labels. And the first thing what you wanna do is go to create new and then click blank canvas. And I scroll down until I find the 8.5 by 11 because this is the exact size of basic printer paper. Once this is loaded in, go ahead and take a look at your bottle that you're making the label for. For this example, I'm using a two ounce bottle here and I kind of just wrap around my printer paper just to get kind of like a good idea of how much paper it takes up to get the label size that I want. And obviously you can make your label However you want it to look, whatever size you want, you can have it wrap around. You can just do a rectangle on the front. But for this example, I'm just going to create a basic wrap around label since that's typically what most people will probably be using. So the first thing I'm gonna do is go over and click graphics, go to basic, and then select the square. And the bottle's length is what I'm gonna be working on first. The length is roughly about a fifth of this paper. So I'm going to duplicate this five times to see. All right, we need to make it a little bit smaller. And I'm going to duplicate it again just to see. All right, and that's roughly about a fifth. So that's about the length I'm going to go for. Now let's focus on the width. So the width is like kind of more than half of the paper's length. So again, I'm just kind of eyeballing it. Okay, so now we're going to go to this graphics tools. And what I'm going to do is click effects and then click outline. So now we have a black border around it, but it's a little big. So let's make it a little bit thinner. Now I'm going to go back to adjust and I'm going to make the color on the inside of the rectangle white. So that way the inside is empty, but we have a black line. So we know where to cut out. So go ahead and save this image to your computer. Just go to download and then save and then print it out and cut it out and see how it fits around your bottle. All right, and as you can see, the label is a little bit too long, just like literally by a hair. So we know we need to make it a little bit smaller width-wise. But as for the length, I'd say it's pretty solid. Like, that's pretty good. And I'll just be sure to go on to Pick Monkey and then just cut off a little bit of the edge here. So, yeah. First test turned out great. I've been doing this for a good few years now because this is always how I've made my labels. So I think I've just kind of gotten used to using this method. But if this is your first time making labels, it might be like trial and error. But to save paper, just cut off the edge. So when you go to print out another test, just use the same piece of paper so you're not wasting paper. Let's move on to the next step. All right, so back to Pick Monkey. We know we need to adjust this just slightly which that should be good. Doesn't need to be perfect because obviously this is just an example for you guys. Now the next thing we want to do is go ahead and duplicate this. And we want to duplicate it as much as possible to cover up the entire piece of paper. So don't be scared to rotate them. Just make sure that they're straight and try to fit as many as you can on one piece of paper. And I'd say that's about as many as I can fit. So let's go ahead and space them out a little bit. All right, now this is your template. Since we're making this for a two ounce bottle, what you wanna do is just save this as two ounce bottle template. So in the future, anytime you need to make a new label for two ounce bottles, you have this template. Template, template or template, I don't know. It doesn't matter, you know what I mean. So go ahead and save this. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is go over here to file and click edit a copy. And this has brought up a complete exact copy of what we just worked on. Go through and delete everything. I know this is gonna seem weird, but I promise there is a point to this. Now what I'm going to do is go over here to edits, crop canvas, and I'm gonna crop out what's inside of this box. Hit apply. There you go. And now you have your other template for your two ounce label. So this is where we can actually start designing our labels. So if you live in the United States, there are guidelines on what is legally required to be on your product's labels. And you can learn exactly what all the requirements are over on the FDA's website. 
I will link down below to the exact link where it'll tell you exactly everything that needs to be on your label. I do have a pretty old video where I talk about this. All the information is still up to date in that video. So I'll link that video down below if you guys want to go watch it. So yeah, do not take this as a guide on what is legally required to be on a label. Go read all that information. I'll link it down below. So let's just start making the label. I'm going to click on text, click add text. And the first thing I'm going to do is add my brand's name on the top. And another tool I like to use is go down here to settings and then keep a line and snap on. Sometimes I turn it off if it makes me mad. Um, and then click show grid on canvas and do eight by eight. So that way you can make sure it's centered, but also this red line will help center it. Got that there. Now the next thing I like to focus on is the name of the product. So for this video, we're just going to call it a facial toner. Let's do it with this text. Cute. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and add some more text, bring it down here. And this is going to be our net weight. And net weight is the amount of product that fits inside of the bottle. All right, so I'm gonna add some more text. Bring it over here. Move it all around to be the size you want. And this is gonna be our ingredients. And I'm just gonna copy and paste the ingredients of one of my products to make it easier on me. So now what I'm gonna do is duplicate this. Bring it over here, put all the text on the right side. And then I'm gonna do the directions over here. And again, I'm just going to copy and paste the directions to one of my products. So I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this, bring it down here. And this next section is going to be my warnings. Um, it's always important to like put on your cosmetics that it's external use only, not intended to diagnose, treat, cure any diseases, um, always do a patch test, even though I put that over in the directions, just whatever warnings that you think you need keep away from children. I'm just gonna put that for now, so that's good. So another important thing you need to add to all of your labels is a shelf life. So you can just Google shelf life logo, and then you can just take one of these images, whatever one you like, and then click up here to add image, go to computer, and then select your image. It'll appear over here, just tap it, and then just size adjust it. And obviously if your product shelf life isn't 24 months, here's what I like to do. Click erase and adjust the eraser size. And you can just erase what's on the inside here. And then go back to text, add text, and then put in what, whatever the shelf life is. Maybe it's 12 months, move that there and then see how the snap and alignment is not allowing me to center it. Go down to settings and then turn off a line and snap. And that way you can put it exactly where you want to put it. Another thing that's always important to add to your labels is your website. Fairly.store. Just going to add that. Actually, I'm going to move this. We're just going to put it over here. And also you always need to add uh, like who your product is manufactured by or distributed by. Obviously mine is Terra Lee LLC. All right, so I think you guys get the point. Just make the label look however you want. Just make sure you're following the FDA guidelines. But this is how mine looks in the end. So just make sure you save it to your computer. Now, I think it goes without saying that the labels I'm making in this video aren't going to look exactly like the labels that I use in my Etsy shop because I just use front and back labels. So they're pretty small labels. You can't really fit much information on them. Like I could not fit the ingredients on the back of this label at all, but that's because I package my products in boxes and legally you don't need the ingredients on the bottle if you have it on the outer box. So all that extra information is on the outer box. But obviously the method we're using in this video can be used to make these labels as well, any size labels, even these labels, for these boxes here, I use the same exact method. But obviously for this video, I wanna make the kind of labels that most people will be using, which are wraparound labels. So now you just wanna open up another tab of PicMonkey and you wanna to get to your two ounce template that we just made at the beginning. If you can't find it on your auto saved here on PicMonkey, just go ahead and upload it because remember I told you to save it to your computer. So get that back up. And what we're gonna do is click add image, go to your computer, and we're gonna add that label that we just made. So here it is, tap on it, and you're going to adjust it to fit right into your label, which, oh my God, look, it's perfect. I don't even need to adjust it, that's amazing. Wow, duplicate, 
and you're just going to keep duplicating it to fill up your entire template. And honestly, these lines are actually pretty thick. I would make them a bit thinner so you're not wasting as much ink from your printer. All right, now you wanna save this. So now what we wanna do is print out these labels and you wanna make sure you're using a laser printer not an inkjet printer because laser printer ink doesn't smear because it's actually not ink. They use like heat or something to get the text on the paper, but inkjet printers actually use ink so the ink will smear. So make sure you go out and buy a laser printer. If you don't, your labels won't be waterproof. This is the printer that I use. Honestly, it's not the best printer. I really should get a new one, but I hate replacing things that aren't broken because it's not broken. It still gets the job done. It just isn't the best quality, but you can buy it for about $100 on Amazon. I'll link it down below if you guys want to buy it. So make sure you have a laser printer and you want to make sure you're printing on weather proof paper. So I would show you guys the box to this label paper I use, but I actually just opened them all up and put them in this big stack. So I don't have the box to it, but I'll put up on the screen to the paper I use. I just really like the one from Amazon more than the one from online labels. I remember I mentioned a while ago that I purchased some from online labels, but I now purchase it from Amazon. I wish I could find it cheaper because it is pretty expensive paper, but it has this like vinyl texture to it. You can tell it's completely different than normal uh, paper. And also I should mention that you wanna make sure it's sticker paper. I guess I didn't say that. Um, so you wanna look for sticker weatherproof paper for laser printers and make sure it's obviously eight and a half by 11 because that's the size of paper for printers. So let's go ahead and print this out. And my printer is a little bit low on toner. So that's why it looks like that. But you know, the text still looks good. I'm just trying to get the most out of my toner before I replace it. To cut these out, I use this thingy-mabob here. I'll link to one down below in case you don't know where to find one. And I think this part is kind of self-explanatory, but you just want to cut it out along the line. Or obviously if you want, you can use scissors. And there you go. That's how you make your labels. I hope I made that seem easy. And I know this part is pretty self-explanatory, but to apply, just take off the back. Just align it on your bottle, which honestly is the hardest part. Make sure it's pretty even on the back. And obviously if you don't like that gap, you can just make them, make it closer, but that doesn't really bother me. And there you go. Now you have a label, super easy. All right, now the evidence to show you guys it's waterproof. You ready? And I've literally had like the bottles sit in water for like overnight and they're still waterproof. So no smearing at all. None. Amazing. I really wish I had a video like this when I first started because I don't know why, but this information is so hard to find or at least it used to be. All right. So now that you guys know how to make labels, come back for my next video and I'm going to show you guys exactly how I use my Cricut to cut out my labels so you don't have to sit there and cut them all out yourself because that's freaking annoying. So now that you guys have the labels, I'm just gonna use these labels as an example in my next video and show you how to upload them to Cricut, have the Cricut cut them out, all that jazz. So see you in the next video. Someone to